Let's talk a little bit about rocks and plate tectonics as it relates to mountain building and deformation. So orogenic events are going to create the two rock types, crystalline rock types, igneous and metamorphic rocks. Certainly there's going to be some sediments shed off of those igneous and metamorphic rocks during and after the orogenesis, but mostly we're thinking about igneous and metamorphic rocks in mountain building. So in this image, there's compression, continental crust, continental crust coming in <clears throat> and causing thrust faults on either side. This is a pop-up structure, two fold and thrust belts, and then the big mountains popping up in between. So the igneous rocks are going to be associated with any kind of um, arc of um, a subduction zone. Then there can just be melting that occurs because of um, decompression melting at a divergent plate boundary. Metamorphic rocks, mostly the bulk of them are going to be those regionally metamorphosed um, mountain chain wide metamorphic rocks, but there also can be contact metamorphism and deep burial metamorphism in subduction zones. <clears throat> so mountains can get really big. So these are jagged, steep slopes, lots of relief, a young mountain chain here. Mostly the mountains are going to be formed through convergence. So convergent plate boundaries and continental collision. There's also mountains that are going to form in rifting when you have big, 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 big normal faults. For the most part, what we saw earlier in the intro section to this chapter was that the, uh, they're going to be in linear belts, so a line of mountains across the landscape. Move my face again. All right, add a subduction zone. Here we have um, <clears throat> an incoming exotic terrain that's just a chunk of continental crust riding along the oceanic crust. That oceanic crust is subducting in the subduction zone. Within the accretionary prism, there's going to be some thrusting. Here is the um, volcanoes that form as a result of subduction. And then over here to further inland is going to be Maybe an old arc that was already um, accreted onto the continent. So old, ancient, uh, volcanic arc, igneous rocks. And then uh, because that compression is, is going throughout this whole system, on the outside of that, there's going to be more um, compression <clears throat> and faulting that occurs in a fold and thrust belt over here. So this is um, what it would look like if you just stretched all those sediments out and they're flat lying, then you squished them all up. So here's all those sediments squished together. Once you've closed the ocean basin, this is what the um, tectonics looks like. You've got two buoyant pieces of continental crust they're ramming into each other, and that's why you get these high mountains like the Himalaya Mountains and like the Appalachian Mountains were really high. And on either side of the mountains, you have the fold and thrust belts, these series of thrust belts. And remember, at the base of those is the big detachment fault along the base of all those thrust faults. In extension, we've seen an image like this before. We have continental rifting. The crust is thinning. There's some decompression melting in here. We're getting a little bit of magma coming into the system. And here's that big detachment fault. And these are normal faults. Boom, boom, boom on either side of the rift. Volcanoes are starting to form in the rift valley. So not really metamorphic rocks here. Just a lot of sediment pouring off of these faults and igneous rocks popping up within the uh, rift valley. Mount Everest in the background there is the highest mountain on earth if we just look at what's on the continents and um, the 
top of Mount Everest has limestones. So that was one of the pieces of evidence for tectonics and um, how mountains formed after geologists realized that limestones were at the top of the mountains in the Himalaya. The mountains can get really high. Here's really high jagged mountains, of course. And over time, they look like this. So this, this is more Appalachian style um, landscape here. And um, so in the beginning, they're steep, jagged, lots of relief. Over time, through weathering and erosion and transporting of sediment, you're going to have um, more uh, rounded mountains. The tectonic activity that causes deformation is going to happen mostly at the edges of our continents, at convergent plate boundaries. So the center of the continents become pretty stable over time, and those are called the cratons. And this is crust that hasn't been deformed in a very long time, like a, a billion years. Ga is a billion years. And the craton is uh, split into two different, I guess, units. One is the shield. That's the Precambrian igneous and metamorphic rocks. And then there is the platform, which is um, sediment. So it says layers of Phanerozoic strata. So this Canadian shield is the igneous, old billion year old igneous and metamorphic rocks. And then the platform or the sediments on the edges of it that form in the middle.